Hello everyone, welcome back on the course of higher surveying and we are in the module 6 on photogrammetry. It is the 7th lecture today and it is more about the digital images. If you remember that in last 6 lectures we have discussed many concepts. All those concepts are equally applicable to the digital images. However, today we are going to discuss something which is only popular or only applicable with the digital images. And that is the reason we are purely dealing with the digital photogrammetry in today's lecture and the next lecture. So I would like to emphasize here about the books. We have suggested two more books, especially these two books about today's lecture on image matching. There is a good introduction and good amount of material available in this book. That is Photogrammetric Computer Vision by W. Faustner. I would like to say again these two books are pretty expensive and one should join some public library or maybe an institute library. Hope these books are available there. Let us talk about the image matching. You can see there are two images of the same room. There is a cabinet and in the cabinet there are a lot of material is there like some files, some books and lot of material. If I try to match these two images manually like this by translation, this edge should match with this edge. Similarly, this edge should match with this edge and this edge should match with this edge. So once these three edges are matched, you will get mosaic or combination of two images where you find the resulting image is much wider. So that could be a good application for image matching. Moreover, we have many applications requiring image matching. The first could be relative orientation. I also need image matching concept there so that once they match, then I can generate a 3D view by the relative orientation. So let us go ahead for the image matching and try to learn that how to do that. Automatically here I can see that there are two images of the same building and this edge if you just look here it is this edge and similarly this edge is this edge. And you can also find out the other common features between the two. Now if you again integrate these two images you will get a bigger image that is combination of the two and that is covering a larger area. So how to perform the image matching? That is the most important element today. And you have to understand some of the concepts. The first thing is that we are going to do the least squares matching by observation equation method. You will be surprised we are assuming that I have two images and these two images have the same orientation. That means exterior orientation parameters of two images are same and they are acquired by the one camera. So their interior orientation parameters are also same. As a result, I need to do only the translation between the two images. Once they are translated like this, they will be matching. The moment I perform the best matching or the digital computer performs the best matching, we will say stop here. That means by least squares matching, I will get the minimum error between the two images for the matching process. So let us say one image is the observed image G and another image the reference image F. Remember in observation equation method what did we write LB plus V equal to L adjusted. Similarly let us say F is adjusted or the reference image and I am trying to bring the image G by adding the residual it will become F. So now you can understand that how are we correlating concept of image matching with the observation equation method. And then we write f x a equal to l a where x is parameters and then we write l a equal to l b plus b. So now we are going to use the same concepts here. f is image function. Similarly, G is observed image. Both G and F are functions. You must be surprised how image can be a function. Let us imagine that you have an image and it has some pixel values. That means at a given x y location of a pixel I have some intensity value and that intensity value is function F. So I can imagine that there is some surface which is small f or maybe small g and they are representing the intensity value or the pixel value or the digital number of the image. 
I'm assuming that the function f is an continuous function. Similarly, function g is also a continuous function. So they are not x, y, but they are function of x, y. At a given x, y, they have some value. Now, by the observation equation method, first linearize f x a with respect to u and v. So what is my u0 and v0? They are basically the translation that I want to perform between the two images. So I have estimated some initial value of translation u0 and v0. v0 is in the vertical direction, u0 is in the horizontal direction, in the x or y directions. And then around that point, I am trying to linearize function f by Taylor series. Delta u is deviation from u0. Similarly, delta v is also there. And so I can write that this is the term I have and these are the derivative terms into delta u and derivative term into delta v. Okay, let us see that there is an output image g and there is a reference image. If I put the animation like this, this is f here and I want to match these two images. That means I am putting the same image and I am trying to match two images. Ideally, if they are matched, then they will be having the same edge here, here and it will match exactly. This is window and I am trying to move on this way. So if I take this window as shown in the animation and if I try to move, so it may not detect change in the image. But what if I move this same box on the x direction like this, now I am moving it. So definitely when it passes through this edge, this box will find out lot of changes because of the change in the f function that is intensity values. There is a homogeneous white color and there is another homogeneous color. However, at this edge, at this point, you can understand that there is a change in the f function, the image function. So even if I take this particular piece here from the g image and I try to place here, so there will be some variation you will find out. The moment it is matched like this while moving in the x direction, you will see that exactly it will be matching and I will have minimum variation between the two. So I have achieved the least squares matching of two images. So I hope you got the concept that I am taking some kind of box here that I call it neighborhood. And I am using this to detect same intensity value or the minimum variation in the target or output image. So I am taking this box as neighborhood. That means I am saying that whatever number of pixels are there like this. I am taking this neighborhood m by m and I am trying to bring this on reference image and I am trying to see where variation will be minimum. Now you may find out over this process when I am moving pixel by pixel, this point, this point, this points. These are the points where two images should match on this edge. And this is we are trying to achieve. So let us say my residual is noise. So G is observed image and M is local neighborhood. Remember the size of the box. It is M deciding there. Let's say there are pixels like that. I'm drawing here one, two, three, four, five. So it is regarding this pixel. It is called five by five neighborhood. There are five rows of pixels and five columns of pixels. Generally, we take odd number, three by three, seven by seven, and larger the neighborhood, I will have more confidence in the work and the large neighborhood will definitely take more time for the calculation. And that's some kind of advantage as well as limitation. The larger the neighborhood, I will take a lot of time, but I will be more confident in calculations. On the other hand, Smaller the neighborhood, I will take less time, but I will be less confident. So GM is observed image over M local neighborhood in output image. NM is noise over the M local neighborhood and it is applicable to image G here. The FM is image function of reference image. Reference image is not going to move, the G is going to adjust itself. That means data is G, that is output and it's going to adjust with the reference. So what about the derivative of F? So this is a derivative in X direction because U is the translation in x direction. So I write it f dash u and again over the m neighborhood. I'm calculating derivative over m neighborhood and we'll see what's the meaning of that in coming slides. Similarly, in v direction, 
or in y direction f dash is derivative and delta u and delta v are shift that means with respect to u 0 v 0 do I need to shift in positive x or maybe negative x maybe positive y or negative whatever the values will come here and we will update our u 0 v 0 and we will try to shift till we get the minimum values of the function in the least square sense. This is function written here I have written these for m number of neighborhood this also for m number of neighborhood like this like this and we will talk about what is this value since it is the f m that we have linearized this thing. So, the value of the function called here f u 0 v 0 this is this here and this is also here this one is nothing but f u 0 v 0 this is noise here over m neighborhood and these are the derivatives the important aspect is how to calculate the derivatives for the f what could be the size of these matrices so I am writing m by 1 this is m by 1 again that is a matrix and this is delta x matrix there are two unknowns I have written in the form b is equal to ax minus l form and I can find out the solution here let us see this is f image I am specifying like this these are all the values here there are some specific values so let me first fill like this let us say there is 5 by 5 Sobel filter I try to fill these values minus 5 plus 5 minus 4 0 plus 4 so let me just write 0 0 0 0 and then we have some values like minus 8 plus 8 minus 10 plus 10 minus 10 minus 20 plus 20 plus 10 and then we repeat these values so this is Sobel filter s x it will detect the edges in x direction this value stands here and this value stands here similarly I will take this value and this values I am taking these two values this value and this value and I can write f dash u equal to I will use this value also and this value also so f i plus 2 j into 10 this value minus this value into f of i minus 2 j and that is what we call finding out the derivative one more way let us look into this thing now I am using these two so how to write it so I will multiply 20 here and minus 20 here and I will take the difference of the two and do the calculation so it will be 20 into f of i plus 1 j minus minus 20 f of i minus 1 j so this is the way we calculate derivatives now we calculate f dash v we need to have a different Sobel filter s y the filter that detects the edges in y direction let us once again look into the Sobel filter and this time we are defining the Sobel filter for detecting the edges in y direction and this time the Sobel filter is slightly different it detects the edges in y direction and how to detect that we will see so the s y Sobel filter is given as 5 8 10 8 5 then I will repeat this line here with minus values similarly this line here with minus values so this is Sobel filter to detect the edges in y direction because if there is an edge here for example say like this that means there is a red area and then there is a white area and if I put this zero line over there like this then I will take the values over there I will multiply with these values 
of white areas and I will multiply the values with these values here. Then I will take a difference and if there is edge it will be enhanced because there is a difference of plus minus of minus something. So, it will be enhancing of the edge. So, how to calculate derivative? So, f dash v equals to I will take this or this or maybe this and this. I will take this and this. So, let us say 10 into f of this value i j plus 2 minus minus 10 into f of this value that is i j minus 2. Similarly, I can calculate f dash v also in a different way using this value here and this value here and this value in the and this value in the reference image as 20 into f of i j plus 1 minus minus of f of i j minus 1. I hope you got the concept how to calculate f dash v. Let us imagine there is a black and white image where half of the image is black and half of the image is white. Suppose you are putting your Sobel filter in black area or maybe white area. So, what will happen? All the values of the image f are same and even if I multiply with this logic, I will get derivative value as 0. You can try yourself because these values are same. But if there is a value at the edge, that means there is white area here and black area here. What will happen now? If I take the difference of these two, so this value will be very very high. This value in case of black it will be 0 and this value if it is in white area it will be let us say 255 or 250 or something like that very high value and as a result this difference will be very high. So, now you can imagine that in presence of edge this derivative values will be very high, but in presence of no edge these derivative values are very minimum. Now, I have already explained you how to calculate the derivative. So, let us say we have calculated the derivative f dash u for m neighborhood and equal to if there is an edge in the f image like this. At this point, this is one homogeneous area and this is another homogeneous area. So, let us say the value is here 254 and here value is 26. So, then I will calculate value as into minus 10 here into plus 4 into minus here plus 10 into 254. So, it is indicating very high number and that is the way we understand that edge. Same way I can find out what is f dash v for m neighborhood. So, let us see that we have calculated f values and everything for m neighborhood. Now, I will use standard least square solution where these are the standard equations that we have learned already in the lecture of observation equation method in module 4. You can review them again if you need. So, sigma is covariance matrix of the noise. The noise is the residual or error and I can write it sigma n square. That is the reference variance if you remember. Because we assume here that noise is more or less same on each pixel. So, this is system of normal equation. So, I can write delta x like this. So, I find out first value of delta u and delta v that means from u0 v0 how much I need to further shift. So, I need to update u0 and v0 like this. So, the moment I updated that I will use the new values of u0 and I will try the same process again repeat the same process again for each pixel. What is the purpose of this repetition? Remember at certain stage delta u delta v ultimately will become minimum or very close to 0 that means delta u become 0 and delta v become 0 that is giving you the minimum value of delta v and delta v. And as a result we say that ok now we have matched two images and at the edge or not we can detect it. So, that is the process called least square image matching. For the purpose of explanation I have taken very simple example of two images where there is only translation in x or y direction. However, we have two images and now, imagine that the EO parameter and IO parameter of the images are same, but I am trying to match one image by this way. So, definitely if there is an edge which is vertical, it will not match like this. I need to rotate also.
image i need to translate also like this this and this all the motions so we do the affine transformation and the equation is like that where these are translations and these are rotation matrix elements so it is six parameter transformation moreover i am also adding a linear transformation that means image function is also changing so i am writing by this way so a7 is multiplication factor and a8 is translation factor that means i am adding some value a8 image function and i am multiplying image function with a7 and i am getting another image function what about the residuals this residual it is 1 and it is 2 they are different remember that when i add residual 1 to g i will get f similarly if i add a res residual 2 to g i will get h let's make life little complicated but little better so again now i am writing the same function here this is f u0 v0 this is noise so this is derivative for these parameters of f you can find out analytically and then you can put the pixel values there again using the Sobol operator you can find out what about this one I wrote like this u0 v0 and these are these values g is observed values over m neighborhood they are same however these are not repeating I am writing noise here over m neighborhood so neighborhood is same m it could be 5 by 5 3 by 3 7 by 7 9 by 9 and so on here I want to calculate these parameters one is the multiplication factor image values and here it is addition value so it is just kind of y is equal to mx plus c image function is also changing by linear way and here translation rotation as well as scale factors So three factors are there and there are a total eight factors. Now let us integrate two matrices. Construct this kind of matrix system and I can partition these matrices here because it is complete zero, this is complete zero and if you are writing a software for you, you need not to store all these values because zero is not going to give you any value for the purpose of calculation. So, we always keep these two matrices separate and we do the matrix partitioning and we try to estimate these unknowns together. I can write this V is equal to AX minus L, V, L, A and delta X here. So what about the initial estimate of U0, V0? So I can say all translations are 0 and all diagonal rotations are 1. So what's the meaning here? A1 is 1, 0, 0, 1 this matrix uv plus what about the u0 v0 I will say 0 and 0 translations u0 v0 and I get some value here. So these are initial values of a1 to a6 similarly initial value of a7 is 1 and a8 is 0. So they are all initial values we are talking about. So here u0 v0 that uh, they are translation factors. So I can now understand that if there is a steeper gradient that means if there is a clear edge so what will happen one area high value and another area very low value so there is an edge so I will enhance that edge by Sobel operator. The higher this difference easier for detection. So this is what we call the least squares logic for the image matching and what sometimes we call least squares matching for images. What about the point feature extraction? I have given you one situation before that I want to match two images. However, now I am giving you a situation where I want to detect point. What is meaning here? Let us say there is an image and if there is a distinct point that means let us say some ground control point that is visible in the image and that control point is also visible in the ground surface. But I want to first detect ground control points on the images before collecting the data in the field and for that purpose I need to detect them can I do it digitally can I do it automatically let us see the particular point should differ with the local neighborhood here it is called the precise localization I can localize that point very easily compared to its surrounding that property should be there it should detect points I am basically using the Fosner operator and it has some characteristics the moment you fulfill this requirement 
it can detect distinct points in the image. Even if the illumination of the scene or the image is changing, still it can detect the very very pinpointed point which are comparatively different from the surrounding. It is invariant under geometric transformation and it supports the image interpretation. That means once you detect the control points or the some points which are distinct with their surroundings, then you can find out what are these points and what are these features indicating. So that we call as image interpretation. Let us see what is the Fosnor operator. This point is distinct point. Similarly, this point it is distinct because it is completely different from surroundings. For example, this point on the file it is distinct from the surroundings and it is one of the control point if terrain is like that. Similarly, any point that is different from the surroundings is distinct point and or you can mark many many points on this image. Even this point is also a distinct point because here it is yellow, here it is white, here it is something else, here it is something else. All the surroundings if I look at, so they are good points to detect. Now let us see this particular example where I can say this is the points which are distinct points and I want to detect these points using Fosnor operator. All these points I want to detect. In case of image matching, we have two images and we are running one Sobol operator taking the images from one and to trying to match with the other. However, in case of Fosnor operator which detects one point in an image, what to do? Let us take only one image and now you are running this Sobol operator over that image. So let us work again with the Sobol operator. This is Fij and I am keep on filling these values here take a Sobol operator and this time how to calculate the derivative that is most important now to understand. It is slightly different from the image matching and Sobol operator is same what we have learned in the last two slides before. And now how to calculate the derivative in this case because it is only one image it is not two images that we are matching. It is only one image that in which we are trying to detect a particular point which is comparatively different from the surrounding pixels. So let us say we have Sobol operator and this is the point where I am putting Sobol operator in the image f or g. Let us consider this value of Sobol operator which could be 10 or minus 10 what and let us say this is minus 10 and all are zeros fine it could be 8 and plus 8 say I am just writing some values. You will take the value of this image here and you will multiply with the 10 which is just below this section. So 10 into some value plus 8 into some value plus 0 into some value plus minus 10 into some value and you will make the summation for the all the points. There are 24 points from here to here i equal to 24 you are doing a summation over this point. Not only that, you are doing for 25 pixels here including this pixel also. This is the summation at this pixel or for this pixel, this is the value I call the derivative f dash, it is a pixel ij. So this is the way we calculate the value of derivative in case of Fosnar operator. And now I will repeat this process for each and every pixel. So you can imagine that I have shifted the Sobol operator by one pixel in x and now I am repeating the whole process. And again I am calculating the f dash for i plus 1 j and I will repeat this process let us say for f dash i plus 2 j and so on and the process is called a convolution. So after doing this kind of convolution I will find out the derivative of image f. If there is some distinct point let us say a point which is quite distinct with respect to the surrounding what will happen? The value of these derivatives will be very very high compared to an homogeneous area. You can try it yourself, try to take simple black and white image and try to do it. Again I will use the same logic here. If you remember this was the function we have written for image matching but this function is now absent completely because there is only one image. I am writing this thing here like this and I want to find out what is delta u delta v that means I am trying to match Sobol operator in such a way that the moment it detects that particular point which is distinct from the surroundings delta u and delta v should be minimum. So I have find out f dash u, f dash v at first location and similarly the at m location. You can imagine that we have m values here in the back slide then in the Fosnor operator normal equation and now I can write delta x here, least square solution. 
But now what about the n matrix which is ATA and we know that n inverse is covariance of delta x sigma u v. So I can write sigma u v is equal to n inverse times some reference variance and I am writing this matrix ATA inverse like this delta f by delta ft. It is proven well that delta gg is covariance matrix of the gradients, the gradients in original image and these are the uncertainty in the position, position of some pixel that I want to detect, the uncertainty in the position that means uncertainty in the detection of the position of point which is distinct with respect to surrounding is inversely proportional to the variance of gradients. Higher the gradients, is it, it is very easy to detect the point and that is why the moment we say it is a distinct point and that means it is quite different from the surroundings, it is very easy to detect that point in an image by Fosner operator because the values of gradients of that image around that point will be very very high because of the difference between the particular point pixel with this neighborhood. So let us see there are three cases of uncertainty, it is very very less here in this case. In this case the uncertainty in y is very high and in this case uncertainty x that is sigma u and sigma v are very very high because of the homogeneity of the area, this is homogeneous area. that means there are no gradients here on the edge we have so these one this x direction is very small variance sigma u is less and here you can see sigma v is very high. But the moment this situation where both sigma u and sigma v are minimum or least so this is the point it is easy to detect by the Fosner operator and that is why this is kind of situations we want so that we can easily detect these points because it is quite different from its surroundings. So here it is white and here it is some other color. So now how to detect what is the process? Now we are looking into the steps. So this is delta g delta g which is equal to this. So it is equal to this matrix. So I will calculate only these values f dash and I will just put in this matrix, I will construct this matrix. Then I will calculate the eigenvalues of delta g delta g which is given by this logic. So that is minimum eigenvalues. Similarly, maximum eigenvalues like this. So the smaller eigenvalue of gradient covariance matrix correspond to the maximum eigenvalue of the shift. That means because they are inversely proportional, the maximum value of the this is the minimum value of this one. Find out the maximum eigenvalue of the covariance matrix of shift by thresholding. That means I have already find out this, put some threshold value, generally we put 0.5 pixels and then by this thresholding I can find out where the point is, distinct in nature. That means it is distinct with the surroundings. Step 4 is there to extract the features and that is the last step. We search within the local window for the minimum of this one. That means if I have some window like this and different different points I have calculated all the values of lambda max. Let us say this lambda max, this is another lambda max and so on because let us say this is the point which is quite distinct or this is the point quite distinct. So around that all lambda max will start coming. I will take the minimum of the lambda max that means I am taking the minimum of lambda max 1, then lambda max 2 and lambda max m because m is a neighborhood and the moment the lambda max is minimum for a particular point, I will declare that this is the point. That means probably I am here because lambda max will be minimum here. So this is the point that I want to detect in image. So this is the logic of Fosner operator and let us see demonstration of Fosner operator and again we are putting this image where I want to detect these points because they are distinct from their surroundings. If I run the Fosner operator for this image. I will get these points as distinct points. Now you can see here, there also I am getting a lot of points and clearly tell that these are edges. So these are edges here, clearly tell by Fosner operator. Within this homogeneous area, there is nothing is detected but there are some noises there because this was made manually by some person so that there was 
some non-uniform filling here. So it detected some points within that area and then that is the way or the Fosner operator detect the distinct points. I hope this lecture was very useful. It could be a little complicated for you at this moment, but try to learn it. It is very useful for digital images and digital image processing. So here we can detect the GCPs also in the image first by automatic point detections using Fosner operator. So we stop here and then we will meet in the next lecture on the closed range photogrammetry and that will be the last lecture in the module. Thank you.